Oh, Gigi! Oh, good. You're all right. Did anything happen to my precious Gohan? Please, you have to tell me! I don't know. He was building up his power and then the TV went on the fritz. Oh, my brave little warrior. He's too young to be fighting. He should be at home studying. But no, he had to listen to his father instead of me. Hey! Uh Your son Gohan is no longer a baby. Why, he's transcended Goku and now he's become an honorable Saiyan warrior. If you haven't figured it out by now, both your husband and your son are battling to save an entire planet. And without them, we have nothing. Oh, sure, I wish it was me instead of him. But Gohan is the only hope we have left. Come on, Chi-Chi. Everything will be okay. You're too cut. <laughs> huh? What the? <laughs> So fast! They could at least let us take showers. Does anybody want to arm wrestle? Shut up! Well, I was wrong about one thing. You didn't need help. No, but thanks. Fidel, Mother, they're gone. And without Dende, we can't wish anyone else back. Mm. And they were good. I turned them all into chocolate and gobbled them up. Wait. It's faint, but I can still sense something. Just barely. You want to fight Majin Buu? Fight you? No, I want to kill you. Hadouken! Hadouken! Shoryuken! Shoryuken! Tatsumaki! Tatsumaki said Buu, Kyaku! Tatsumaki said Buu! Strike! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Joe. Also, Jay-Z Prox on YouTube, we got an amazingly, amazingly, wonderfully talented guest today. What is your name, sir? Hi, my name is Kyle Abair, and I do that voice acting thing. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. I got a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. Shoot, I'd love to hear them. Okay, awesome. Okay, uh, so uh, what are you doing during these times of quarantine? During the quarantine, uh, voice actors have been expected to kind of upgrade a home recording setup, which we already were required to have in order to do auditions. And now, since no one can go in person to studios, we are being directed online with, with different things. Oh. We use apps like Skype and Zoom to see the video for anime dubs. And then for audio, we're recording audio on our end as a backup, but we're using apps like Source Connect and things to digitally patch in to uh, another computer or the studio normally um, 
in order to record. We can have our script open, which we get as a PDF, you know, emailed, and uh, we'll we'll dub that way, basically. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Same cool. with games. Same process. Normally, cartoons, since they're recorded, the audio is recorded first. You would have all the actors gathered together at once. But now, again, the the pandemic thing, and everyone stay at home. Everyone has to record on their own. Oh, wow. That's wow. Okay, that's pretty different. Okay, wow. Awesome. It is different, and and we are very blessed that when when this hit and so many people unfortunately were furloughed or lost their jobs and lost their means of income, we were, this, this particular side of the entertainment industry was able to continue. Unlike on camera, you know, TV and film productions were completely halted, but voiceover stuff, uh, was able to continue. So knock on wood that, that continues. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. Okay. What made you want to become a voice actor? And who was your biggest inspiration? My biggest inspiration was Mel Blanc. <clears throat> He's a cartoon voice actor. Now passed away. But he voiced all the classic Warner Brothers Looney Tunes characters. Bugs Bunny oh. and Daffy Duck and all of them. Nowadays, they're all each character tends to be voiced by different people. Like Eric Bauza does Bugs and Tweety on the new Looney Tunes. Bob Bergen is Por- Porky Pig. And these guys have been doing it for like decades. But... Uh, Back then, you know, I, I'm 51, so I was a child of the 70s and 80s, and uh, my dad introduced me to them because he was a fan of those growing up. And uh, it's like, all right, this is my my pop culture introduction. This is what sealed it for me. It made me want to do that. When I learned that someone can just do that as a job, it's like, all right, I want to do that because I'm a shy person, actually, by nature. I'm very introverted and shy, so I wanted to perform. I wanted to entertain, but I don't want people to look at me. So what better way than hopping on a, a mic with the headphones? And, and so I became fascinated with radio, which I ended up getting a, 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 a degree in broadcasting. And then I took that into an internship at a radio network in Dallas and worked there for like 13 years. And then I uh, crossed over to voice acting in 2000 when I heard about auditions at Funimation. And uh, that has literally been the thing that, that, that got the ball rolling, got the dragon ball rolling, as it were. <laughs> That's really cool. You have like a, you do have like a radio voice. I can see that. Like yeah, thank right. you. I do have like a, a radio voice. Thank you. Like thank it. you. No problem. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite role that you betrayed and can you do that voice for me, if you don't mind? <laughs> okay, well, my favorite one to do is actually not the biggest character in the world. It's Ox King from Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Super, and Kai, and, and all that. Oh, yeah, hey, I sound like Macho Man Randy Savage, <laughs> except more derpy. <laughs> Chi-Chi's getting married. Uh. You know, I love doing that. <laughs> I love doing that voice. <clears throat> but, you know, there's different ones like, like Gohan, and you'll fight you. No, I want to kill you. That's special because, again, it started everything. And one that really has impacted a lot of people's lives is Kamina from Gurren Lagann. You know, like, don't believe in yourself. Believe in me. Believe in the Kamina who believes in you. And I got to pretty much just be myself with that. And then Ryu, the answer lies in the heart of battle. Adoken! Got to be a part of Street Fighter. And because of my connection to Street Fighter, I got to be in Disney, Wreck-It Ralph. Both of them. Yeah. Just, uh, That's so really awesome. That yeah, that's like another check mark on the bucket list. It's like I want to be in a Disney movie. Man, they only hire movie stars. How can I get in there? <clears throat> well, I didn't want to become a movie star, and I don't want to be a voice actor to be rich and famous. I wanted to do this because I'm passionate about the craft. I like being able to help do a, a part of character building. The animator makes the visual s- side, and the actor brings the audio side, and then the audio produ- producers and video producers do the editing and the mixing, and the and there's writing and and editing and all that sort of stuff and everybody is a piece of the pie to give people something to do which is important now more than ever in the quarantine when people are stuck at home we got to entertain them you know it's it's therapy i think you're a very talented voice actor oh hey thank you thank you very very much and i'm I'm very blessed to be able to do something that i love you know that that's the Mm -hmm. end goal that's what i always tell people to do with their lives when they don't feel like they have direction or anything it's like, okay, find something you're passionate about and then make that the end goal and take baby steps towards it. Because if you're only doing a job to make ends meet, which you have to do when you start in the workforce, I get that. You got to pay your dues and all that. But ultimately, you want to get to the point where 
you're not just going to a day job and, and, and to just make ends meet. You know, there are millionaires out there who are completely miserable, you know, yeah. because, you know, maybe they're not into the things that made them rich, like doctors and lawyers and, and all that. Maybe the, it, the drive doesn't, pa- you know, they have all the nice cars in the house and everything, but it's like they feel empty inside. You know why? It's because they didn't do something that they were passionate about. And I think getting rich in your soul is worth a lot more than getting rich in your pocket. You're right. Absolutely right, sir. Cool. I like that. Okay. Yeah. If you could pick any movie, uh, any like role in any movie, TV show, etc., what role would you love to have done? But obviously, obviously, you didn't, but you wish you did. Um, <clears throat> I think every actor wants to be cast on everything they read for. That's true. Mm-hmm. But it's not realistic. <clears throat> so you kind of keep the, the eye on the prize by doing the best you can in auditioning. That's why I say, what's your job as a voice actor? To audition. And if I make the gig, I get picked, I get cast, that's, that's gravy. But I treat the audition as if I were hired. Uh, in terms of things that I wish I got, I mean, everything. I mean, I've tried out for so many different things through the years. Uh, Ichigo from Bleach, I tried out for. I tried out for, I mean, I would have ended up just sounding like Gohan. And I'm glad that they chose, the people that they chose, Johnny Young Bosch. Um, and even though as cool as it would be to say, hey, I'm Batman. You'll always be compared to Kevin Conroy. To me, Kevin Conroy is Batman. He's the animated Batman. He's not the only one who's voiced Batman, but I think he's the most iconic. Everyone else has done a great job. Hollywood stars, Troy Baker, Roger Craig Smith, you know, Richard Epcar has been Joker. They've killed it. They've done a great job, but Mark Hamill, man, he's, he's the gold standard um, and, and all that. So yeah. Um, it's nothing in particular. I just want to be able to land a role in something that means a lot to me, like something in Star Wars, like uh, mm. doing background stormtrooper voices in The Mandalorian or something, you know, anything or, or you know, the animated series. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, do you still keep in touch with your people, like your co-stars? Okay. Or... okay. okay. Uh, yes, yes. I'm able to see a lot of my coworkers and people in the industry most often at conventions because uh, everyone's so busy that when we go to sessions, if we're scheduled back to back, then we'll see each other and have just enough time to say, hey, are you doing okay? Great. I'll see you later. And thank God for social media. We're able to message each other, keep in, in yeah. track that way. But other than that, people have lives. People have spouses and, and, and uh, relationships and children and uh, maybe other jobs and such. Um, for me, over here in Burbank, California, a suburb of Los Angeles, it's just me and my wife. Our kids are grown and, and in Texas, but uh, it's just us together and uh, you know, trying to get through this whole quarantine thing. And uh, I record at home, and I'll get to hear, hear or see, maybe, uh, when we do our sessions. That's a good hot spot for voice acting for commercials. That's a great town. Any major city... Has a lot of opportunity for TV and radio commercials. So I always tell people, depends on what your goals are in voiceover. If you want to do car- cartoons and games and stuff, go to the West Coast, definitely. Um, if you want to do radio, honestly, it's more, it's you make more money doing that. Commercials are way more profitable and the, the projects are more plentiful. So you have more opportunity, but it's also competitive. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, who was the coolest person you've worked with? Uh, I got to work with Billy West, someone that I've idolized for years. Billy West did the voice of Ren and Stimpy. Uh, he's done a lot of things on Futurama. He's a hilarious uh, guy. He tells funny, funny stories. He's just magnetic. He's got this energy about him. He's in his 60s, but he kind of looks like he's in his 30s. He, ha- he has like the energy of someone in their 30s or 20s, and it's, it's infectious. It's really great to see uh, people that I've looked up to and then get to meet them. And then one uh, one better than that is just getting to work with them. I got to work with them on a commercial. They ended up cutting me out of the commercial, but I, I still, I treasure the experience because I got to record with them and I'd done nothing but heard great things. And it's like, oh, I'm, I can't wait to meet this guy. And yeah, it's, uh, it's truly special, but I kind of get starstruck when I meet anyone in the industry. It's, 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 it's just so cool to see people come from all different backgrounds. A lot of people come to the stage. I came from radio. 
A lot of today's crop of newer generation voice actors started by doing amateur voice acting online, fan dubs, things like that. And, you know, the internet now with YouTube and Twitch, a lot of user-driven creator content, it's kind of like the new Wild West, you know? TV networks have not being forced to do streaming instead of broadcast, where everyone, it's kind of all coming together, where everyone's home setups and everything is just, it's kind of like major TV shows look like they're now taking place uh, on Skype or YouTube blogs or, or whatnot. It's kind of funny to me. Speaking of Twitch, go follow Kyle on Twitch. I'll leave it in the description down below. Yay, go on with your own bad self. I just made affiliate, so now I'm going to work towards getting partner. So I'm going to try and stream every day. At, I'm going to shoot for 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And um, I ordered a, a video capture card. I'm not going to have it for a couple of weeks. But once I do, I'll be able to obviously hook up my Switch and play a lot of those games. I love Splatoon and a lot of stuff like that. But uh, yeah. So, oh, because I actually, because I, believe me or not, I, yeah, I can't even talk. I actually do Twitch and I could promote oh. you on there too if you want me. I could like bring my viewers to you. I got you. I, dude, dude, that would be awesome. That's awesome. I got you. Just, just message me your handle so I can make sure I'll, I'll, I'll follow you back, man. Absolutely. Thanks. Maybe after the podcast, I could tell you like all that info. Yeah, sure. Know. Sure. Oh. Okay. What director taught you the most? And which director would you love to work with? Well, let's see. Uh, most projects are recorded by one director. So it's <clears throat> in terms of co-directing, I don't know. I mean, I, I've never directed myself, but uh, I would love to work with Andrea Romano, who directed all the Batman, the animated series and Avatar and uh, Boondocks and tons of series. Animaniacs back in the day. One of my favorite animated series, uh, but she retired. So it's like, hmm, who can I work with? Colette Sunderman is another great. Uh, she did all the Powerpuff Girls back in the 90s. She's done tons of animated stuff for DC. Um, golly. Um, the the guy that basically does all the Lucasfilm stuff uh, with uh, animated stuff. He wears a cowboy hat or, or something all the time. Yeah, yeah. His Try name's to totally, but you know who I'm talking about. That guy. Yeah. My listeners are going to go, duh, it's so-and-so. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. But you guys know who I'm talking about. Anyway, yeah, he is, you know, he's the one that kind of handpicked Steve Bloom for Rebels and uh, Mary McGlynn. Uh, I've been, I've recorded with Mary McGlynn for years. She was a director and an actor simultaneously. Now she's doing more directing than anything else for Disney and stuff like that. So, um, golly, if I can, if I can get ears from anyone who's directing, you know, that makes it sound like all actors are desperate. It's only half mostly true, uh, <laughs> because our job is freelance. You know, there's only, there's a, you know, you only get paid if you work and most of our sessions are you're hired, you record, and then you're let go because they don't need you anymore. So you have to keep auditioning and auditioning and auditioning and try to try to hustle, you know, network and get an agent and do all that stuff. So when you said Animaniacs, believe, believe it or not, I'm actually really good friends with the guy who played Yako, Rob Paulson. Oh, yeah. I know him, too. I know him, too. Well, he's, he's great. He's really cool. Okay. If you were a voice actor, where would your career be? And... Well, are just the hobbies to you besides voice acting. Um, okay. Um, what I probably would have done, I'm a big hard rock, heavy metal guy. I'm a drummer. Uh, I grew up in band. So yeah, I would, I would totally try and do music. Although most bands don't make it. So I don't know if I could stick to that. I'm it's not as passionate about that. If I weren't a vo voice actor, I'd try to be a voice actor, but I'm also a huge movie fan. I love horror, sci-fi, action, all that stuff. The post-production process fascinates me. So, you know, sound mixing, sound effects, Foley. Foley, where the people's job is to take different objects, hold it next to a mic, and dub over the sounds of, like, put, zipping up a, a jacket or crinkling things or creating alien sounds. You know, Ben Burt did all these iconic sound effects for Star Wars. 
and different things like, hmm, how can I make this ship sound? I'm going to take a, a salad mixer bowl and put an electric shaver in it and then and then process it and do all sorts of things. That, that just blows my mind. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I love I like I love rock music. Awesome. So, what do you mention? Rock on, man. Sorry. <laughs> rock on. Yeah, so, mostly mostly the metal variety, but any sort of offshoot of rock. I like classic rock. I like hard rock. I mean, okay, I'm all over the spectrum. The occasional pop song catches my ear. Maybe some even classic country. But I'm normally not into country. I'm not really into rap and not into hip hop and all that stuff but uh rock you got me I- i'm all about that awesome do you have a favorite band that's actually the next question favorite band oh golly i have so many like all time i mean i grew up in the 70s again so when queen were in their heyday when kiss oh was God. in their heyday aerosmith was in their heyday uh and then my high school years it was things about like iron maiden judas priest uh, nowadays it's all, you know, all of the spectrum. I love the sound designs of, of Trent Reznor. So nine inch nails, uh, like the Gothic doom sound of typo negative who are not together anymore, mm-hmm. but I always love their stuff bands today that I'm really excited about and have been for the past 10 years are things like lamb of God. And I love code orange, uh, slipknot been a fan since they started. Uh, yeah, that's who comes to mind. System of a Down, I think they're killer. Believe it or not, I actually got, I, uh, I actually got to meet my favorite band. Actually, who's that? Queen, Brian May, Roger Taylor. Dude, dude, yeah. you were so lucky. I saw Queen with Adam Lambert at uh, the Hollywood Bowl a few years ago, and it was great. And it made me feel like a child in a way because I had always been a Queen fan, and I never got to see Queen with Freddie Mercury. They come to town and my parents are like, nope, tickets are too expensive. I'm like, ah. so getting to see Queen and Adam Lambert is an amazing vocalist. Oh my God. He did all those songs justice. You know, there's only one Freddie Mercury, but man. And then Brian May seems like the coolest guy. And he's like a, yeah. he's a scientist, right? He's like, he's got a, a master's yeah. degree. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. I was like so nervous. So I met them. I was like, uh, you're Queen. You're- yeah. Yeah, what do you yeah. do? And you meet your heroes. It's like, what would I do yeah. if I if I met people like them or if I got to say hi to George Lucas? It's like, you changed my I mean, he's heard that so many times in his life, he probably is sick of it. But I'm like, dude, you shaped my childhood. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have a favorite sport, favorite team from those sports? I am really not into sports, but I am into wrestling. I mean, that's sports oh. entertainment. I love AEW uh, right now. I'm all about Jericho and uh, dudes like that. And basically the whole roster over at AEW. I loved, uh, you know, The Rock and Undertaker from WWE. There's there's some still ones that are still WWE over there that that really impressed me, like Seth Rollins and, um, man, Ric Flair back in the day. I met, I met him at a convention last year. That was funny. Oh, Woo! That was wild. <laughs> Um, that's yeah, yeah, but normally I'm not really a sports guy. I wish I was because I see how people are so passionate about getting together with their friends and watching the Super Bowl and all that. And I'm just like, I could care less, I just want to see the movie trailers. And now they put the movie trailers online sometimes before they air as commercials on between the things. So I'm like, good, I don't have to tune in and wait, I can just watch when I want to watch. Smart, that's smart, right there. Okay, uh. Hopefully when things get back to normal sooner rather than later, are there any projects you have in the works? Uh, yeah. And unfortunately I can't talk about them, but you know, it's because they're always secretive. It's like, you can't talk about it until it's out. So we sign these, these papers called a non-disclosure agreement. You sign these NDAs Mm -hmm. and they make us. So when you see us talk about it on social media, 9.9 times out of 10, we have the (laughs) blessing of the, of the client of the studio or it's out and yeah, we can talk about it once people say that. And that's, that, that's kind of how sometimes I find out that my stuff is out. People will tag me on Twitter going great job on so-and-so. And I'm like, I'm in that. Oh, first, first world problem. I've recorded so many things in 20 years that I forget when I'm in. So now I record and I open the notes app on my phone 
and I'll, I'll type down the character I'm doing in the name of the show or the game. And it's like, okay, save that in my notes. And when it comes out, then I can go, oh yeah, that was me. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Awesome. Okay. Uh, what advice would you give a younger people or any people who want to become a voice actor? thing about voice acting is put that emphasis on acting, not the voices, because people always misconstrue and think voice acting is just about being able to do silly voices or impressions. And it's not. There is a small segment of the voice acting spectrum out here with the Hollywood productions and all that where people come in and do voice matches or they dub over the celebrity because the celebrity was already making their next show. And they have to, they're still working on editing the one show. And it's like, uh, there was a plane flying over. So we got to get someone who can voice match this famous person. And then they'll bring in voice talent to do that. And they more often than not don't get credited, which sucks, but you get paid and and all that. So impressions, I wouldn't say just like, okay, no, that's, that's not really what voice acting is all about. And it's like, what good does it do to do a Vegeta impression? Because it's already cast. Chris Sabat is Vegeta. So you got to bring your own thing to the table, your signature sound and what you, how you hone that and master that is through taking classes, workshops, get involved in your school drama program and all that. Uh, because any sort of experience is going to help you with your foundation improv, especially improvisation is a skill that all voice actors have to master. And, and we're always called to think on our feet uh, when, when coming up with a voice in a session or coming up with, uh, some sort of committed, uh, acting choice. And then you have to be flexible because the director is may love what you do, or they may say, give me a more like this. And you have to be able to take direction. So it's this juggling act, right? It's in the booth. Fortunately, it's not based on what you look like or how old you are or any of that, or what gender you are. It's, it's based on your ability to act. You can take direction. You show up on time. You're, yep. you're humble. You're nice. Uh, things like that go a, a long way in like any career, you know, just be nice, be humble. Um, respect the people who have been in the industry, respect your coworkers and, and colleagues. And, um, you'll find that the voiceover community is super, super supportive. There's people like Steve Bloom who actually help teach people that are into voice acting on Bloomvox, the Bloomvox community. Uh, B L U M V O X. He has a, a Facebook page and he teaches every week and, uh, people are able to learn from a, a voice acting legend, uh, directly. Now he's not casting. So don't think of it as, Hey, I'm, I'm going to break into, you know, he's not a director, but he will show you techniques that has helped him in his, um, uh, his process. And uh, there's tons of voice over people just Google and you're going to find a voice acting coach that can either teach you in a quote classroom setting where it's probably eight to 12 people at most, maybe six yeah. or one-on-one over Skype or whatnot. But now everything is zoom and Skype. So technology wise, huh? <laughs> technology has come a long way. I'm glad we're yeah. here and not in the 1918 pandemic. Can you imagine trying to come yeah. up with something to do when there's no technology? <laughs> yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah. So, oh. oh, we'd have to read a book. We'd have to, we'd have to talk to each other. What? Oh my goodness. What? <laughs> Whoa. Is there uh, anything you would like to promote or shout out? Sure. I just, I want to, I want to plug my Twitch channel because that's what I'm working on building right now. Uh, My Twitch channel is Gohan with your own bad self. Um, And uh, I'm trying to stream on most days at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. I just learned to kind of go through my profile and add the schedule. So Uh you can go in there. Plus, I promote it on Instagram, Twitter. I make little banners reminding them when I'm going to be on and all that. It's probably annoying to some people. It's like, stop promoting so much. But hey, it's like, I'm trying. I'm trying. I just became affiliate. I now want to be a partner. I want to be able to, to make a little scratch on the side here since there are no conventions we got to hustle we got to do online autograph signings we got to do twitch we got to we got to do whatever's available to us to to try and get by and you know make ends meet but anyway at twitter i am uh, i'm at kyle a bear my name is spelt like hebert but it's pronounced a bear like a bear is talking uh at kyle a bear on instagram and um facebook.com slash kyle a bear vo on facebook is my facebook uh, Facebook group, but I normally just cross post from Instagram. So you're better off just following me on Instagram and or Twitter. Cause that's the one I'm really all about. 
Uh, and yeah, yeah. I hope to see you guys online. I've got another signing coming up. Uh, just follow me and I've got a link in my bio on where you can pre-order a print and then tune into the live stream and you'll see me sign it for you. I'll show it to you. I'll, I'll talk to you kind of one-on-one and we'll mail it to you after the fact. So, uh, yeah, it's cool doing that through geeksign.net. And you can go to geeksign.net and, and find a nice variety of my character prints available. An 8x10 and some Wiz Yakuza prints. He's unbelievable. He's got some 11x17 prints that are 2D and some 3D lenticular. Those are awesome. Don't have any pop awesome. figures right now. Um, but hopefully in the future, because there is an adult Gohan from Dragon Ball Super that just dropped. And I've got the regular one and I got the GameStop exclusive. So I'm like, I'm taken care of. But I hope to sign a bunch of those in the future, too. Anyway, that's all I got. Well, I, I wish you could come to Chicago. That'd be cool. Come to Chicago. Me. I, I've been there before. I've been there yeah. for cons. I've been to ASIN and all that. But obviously, I think maybe you were too young to, <laughs> to be there. That's all right. Cool. But there's the future. There's the future. And, you know, there's Giordano's Pizza. That's always a good... That's a, that's a good motivator that's, right there. That's a good pizza place right there. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Chicago-style deep dish. Woo! <laughs> love it love it i'm a foodie too that's cool yeah i'll link your twitch twitter instagram facebook i'll link all that got you dude dude sure. send me all that i appreciate you uh, spreading the love and mm -hmm. uh yeah i'll give you a follow back on twitch thank you well absolutely I'm, I, well i thank you all so much for watching thank you again kyle for being a guest my pleasure thanks for having me no problem thank you for watching guys and stay awesome stay awesome kyle yo you it is a secret we have known before Gohan could even form words in his mouth. Through fights with Reddits, Garlic Jr., the Ginyu Force, and even Frieza, we've caught glimpses of the child's explosive power. But like an explosion, it always vanished with the moment. It couldn't be controlled until now. At last, the beastly power has been harnessed. Gohan has awoken. Now Cell will battle a warrior 11 years in the making on the next Dragon Ball Z.